and it is September 1st. It's hurricane season. Hurricane Harvey's threat now spreading to Louisiana and Tennessee. Yep, and as Texas struggles to recover from the catastrophic flooding it's experiencing right now, a new storm is rapidly gaining strength over the Atlantic. Is this a misprint of the teleprompter? No. Hurricane Irma now upgraded to a Category 3. Wow. Meteorologist Janice Dean is live in studio tracking its path. I'm convinced she never sleeps. Janice, good morning. <laughs> We're going to be watching uh, several storms in the next uh, week or so. This is what's left of Harvey. I just want to make mention we had several reports of tornadoes, a damaging one in Tuscaloosa yesterday. Now we're going to see the remnants move across the Ohio River Valley and the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast. Upwards of four to six inches still possible with this system, and we're unfortunately going to see a part of Harvey as we get into the long weekend. For the Northeast. Hurricane Irma, all eyes on Irma and will be for the next several days. Uh, it has the potential to become one of the strongest storms we have seen. I think we could actually be up to a Cat 5 in the next five days. Not saying it'll make landfall as a Cat 5, but you know, strengthening to that would be pretty amazing. Here's the steering pattern. We've got the Bermuda high out here. If this high remains strong, then the path is going to move more westward. If the high breaks down, then we're going to see a curve and the east coast could be impacted. So those are the steering currents we're going to watch. Here's the European model. This one is has been very good, very reliable. Heading through Tuesday, watching the Lesser Antilles, certainly Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Cuba and the Bahamas but looks like this curves and comes very close to the southeast coast. And if I could real quick, I just want to show you the GFS. The GFS is now in agreement that we think the east coast could be impacted, more likely perhaps than Florida or the Gulf of Mexico. This one brings, brings it very close to the mid-Atlantic on Sunday. So I'm not saying that this is the outcome. I am just saying be prepared. Don't want to scare be prepared. East Coast, Florida, Gulf Coast, and then we have another one behind this one coming off the coast of Africa right now that will be a hurricane. Wow. Wow. Another yep. one. The good thing is, though, you have September 10th upon the graphic, which means we have 10 days to prepare for Absolutely. the Absolutely. That's a very good point, Ainsley. We have time to prepare people. And okay. you don't want it to hit anywhere, but the previous projections had shown it going into the Gulf, potentially the same we, spot. Listen, so we still. A little bit of good news there. We, a week out, we don't have enough confidence. All I want people to do is know what to do if you have a hurricane on sure. your doorstep. Right. I'm for leaving in the ocean. I would prefer that. So prefer NHC output here showing it at a Category 2 and remaining at Category 2 for the next 12 hours or so. I would not doubt, though, if it goes right back up to a Category 3 by this evening. And then as it goes into the weekend and beyond, it heads towards the Leeward Islands before taking more of a northerly and then northwesterly trend, possibly north of San Juan. Anywhere out from there, very, very uncertain. Models can pretty much go anywhere. All right, let's talk about the satellite imagery now. You see in the last couple runs, you had the eye wall to start, and then it sort of disappears. This is something that usually happens in very intense hurricanes. It's called an eye wall replacement cycle. And you can see in the last few frames, it reemerges. So that's why I actually think that it's going to start re-strengthening again. And you also notice the general size of the storm has also increased over the last couple of hours as it moves on off towards uh, the west. Here's how it looks in terms of how far it is from us. Still very far, 2,400 miles over that, away from Norfolk and Hampton Road. So it's moving at 10 miles an hour, way, way out in the future. Right Tropical storm Irma forms in the Atlantic. Uh, the National Hurricane Center is now issuing a watches and warnings and a track for Irma. Uh, and we are paying close attention to this because over the next five to seven days, this will come very close to the Lesser Antilles, as well as the Dominican Republic, uh, the Bahamas, the Caribbean, and perhaps could affect here in the U.S. So that's something we're going to have to watch. Irma is next. Let's talk about it now. The 11 a.m. advisory here has it already with winds of 50 miles an hour, and it is expected to become a hurricane by Friday morning, a Category 1 hurricane. And then from there, there's a lot of speculation whether it goes farther north or farther south. Why? Well, the computer models, each line you see here is a different rendering of the scenario that could play out. Some as it gets towards the end of this forecast period goes a little bit farther north and some go a little farther south. This time of the year, it's almost just as important to see the strength and the positioning of something called a Bermuda high that sits over the middle parts of the Atlantic. If it was to be rather weak, that'll usually drive these systems to move west and then do that little loop out to sea and we call it a fish storm at that point. If it's just a little bit stronger and positioned a little bit farther towards the west, it'll actually push it right towards the eastern seaboard. 
If it's really, really strong, then it'll push it even farther to the west and way south of our region and into the Gulf of Mexico. Afternoon. Hurricane Irma has absolutely blown up in the far tropical Atlantic with 100 mile an hour winds. It was a tropical storm earlier this morning, but the latest update from the National Hurricane Center now has Irma as a category two hurricane. It is moving off to the west and is forecast to be a major hurricane by tomorrow. Hurricane Irma rapid intensification, category two hurricane. This will be a very dangerous storm and potentially could affect the Caribbean, the Lesser Antilles, uh, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, potentially the East Coast and the Gulf of Mexico or Florida. That's why we need to pay attention. So heading into Sunday, Monday, category four, there is the potential for this to be a category five hurricane. Nothing in its way in terms of intensification. This is the Euro model. Again, one of our reliable forecast models. This is Tuesday, Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Cuba, and then perhaps moving into the Gulf of Mexico. Let's look at the GFS. All right, still a very powerful hurricane moves towards the west, westward, 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 westward. And then this one sort of takes a bit of a more northerly tour. Let's see if I can get my maps to work. There we go. That is a very dangerous hurricane right there. And it moves up towards the southeast. Okay, this is days ahead. This is next weekend. But what I can tell you is if you live along the East Coast, if you live in Florida, if you live along the Gulf Coast, you need to pay close attention to this storm as well as the potential storm in the Gulf of Mexico. Also want to make mention, this is Tropical Storm Lydia, could potentially also be a hurricane and affect Cabo in the next couple of days. So busy, so crucial. I don't want to scare. I want people to be aware. We are into peak season. We could potentially have a very dangerous hurricane on our hands in five to seven days that could potentially hit the East Coast, Florida, Gulf Coast, and then we are also watching the potential for a storm this weekend in the Gulf of Mexico that potentially could bring more rainfall to areas affected by Harvey. We will keep you posted. Listen to your local weather services. Listen to your local officials. Have a preparation plan. Know what to do if there's a hurricane near your area. What we can tell you, there's a great consensus that this is going to be a huge and very strong, extremely dangerous hurricane. As we mentioned, what's left of Harvey is now leading to some new flooding in other parts of the south. And there's actually, believe it or not, a new threat in the tropics this morning. Dylan is tracking that for us. What are we looking at? Here? Well, let's get to all of it because there's a lot to talk about. The heaviest of the rain is now moving through Kentucky. So we're starting to dry things out back through Tennessee. We do have flash flood warnings in effect right in and around uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Those last through tonight. Nashville, those uh, flash flood watches will expire early this afternoon. On the eastern side of it, this is still a powerful storm. We could see some isolated tornadoes and some stronger storms through the Carolinas, even back into parts of eastern Kentucky. We are looking at an additional three to five inches of rain on top of the four to six inches of rain that has already fallen. That's why we do have that flash flood threat. Here is Hurricane Irma. It is a major hurricane right now, a category three. It is still more than 3,000 miles off the coast of Miami. So we are looking at this storm into next weekend, but we do not yet know the effects it'll have, if any, on the United States. As of right now, it is forecast to eventually strengthen into a category four hurricane. And here are the steering currents for this storm. If we have this weak ridge 
of high pressure. We could start to see this take a turn, possibly affecting the mid-Atlantic. Now, if this is a stronger uh, ridge of high pressure, we could see it steered a little farther to the south and then watch as it goes uh, through parts of Haiti and Cuba. Again, there are so many question marks because this is uh, not a forecast until next weekend. Okay. So a lot will change, but it's certainly worth watching. Uh, the last thing anyone wants to see on a map. It really is. Thanks, Dylan, so. Thank you. On the heels of Hurricane Harvey, Tropical Storm Irma forms. For a nation reeling from the devastation of Hurricane Harvey, on Wednesday came some unwelcome news, another possible threat was brewing. Tropical Storm Irma has formed in the Central Atlantic Ocean, the National Hurricane Center said. It poses no immediate threat to land, and it's too early to know its track, forecasters said. As of 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Irma had 60 miles per hour winds. It was located about 2,000 miles east of the Leeward Islands and about 3,000 miles southeast of Miami. Irma was moving to the west at 13 miles per hour. The storm is forecast to strengthen into a hurricane Thursday or Friday, with winds estimated at 75 miles per hour. A tropical storm becomes a hurricane when its sustained winds reach 74 miles per hour. Irma will take about a week to make its trek west across the Atlantic Ocean, AccuWeather said. Weather Bell meteorologist Ryan Ma said Irma will likely become an intense hurricane, with Category 4 or 5 strength, near the Leeward Islands of the Caribbean. A Category 4 storm has winds of at least 130 miles per hour. It is way too soon to say with certainty where and if the system will impact the U.S. AccuWeather hurricane expert Dan Kotolowski cautioned. Possibilities range from a landfall on the Leeward Islands in the northeastern Caribbean to the Carolinas and the island nation of Bermuda and everything in between, he said. Yet another storm could spin up in the Gulf of Mexico by the weekend. If this system does develop, it could bring additional rainfall to portions of the Texas and Louisiana coasts. Meanwhile, in the eastern Pacific Ocean, a developing system that's expected to become Tropical Storm Lydia later Wednesday has prompted a hurricane watch for portions of Mexico's Baja Peninsula. This includes Cabo San Lucas. Tropical storm warnings are also in effect for the Baja as well as the west coast of Mexico. Irma may become major hurricane while tracking across Atlantic, will it affect the U.S.? While the Gulf Coast continues to deal with the devastating impacts of Harvey, emergency managers in the United States have another tropical threat to monitor by the name of Irma. Far across the Atlantic, just west of the Cabo Verde Islands, Irma has strengthened into a Category 2 hurricane as of Thursday midday. Irma became a tropical storm at midday on Wednesday. There is the potential for Irma to ramp up to a powerful hurricane in the coming days, According to AccuWeather hurricane expert Dan Kotolowski, Irma is likely to become a major hurricane well before it reaches the Lesser Antilles, Kotolowski said. Irma will take about a week for the system to make its trek westward across the Atlantic Ocean. Meteorologists will likely be tracking this storm through the middle of September. All interests in the Eastern Caribbean will need to monitor the progress of this evolving and likely dangerous tropical cyclone. Kotolowski said. It is way too soon to say with certainty where and if the system will impact the U.S. During this time, plenty of atmospheric factors will come into play to determine its path. Possibilities range from a landfall on the Leeward Islands in the northeastern Caribbean to the Carolinas and the island nation of Bermuda, and everything in between. Steering winds will guide Irma close to the Leeward Islands and then perhaps Puerto Rico and Hispaniola around the middle of next week, according to AccuWeather meteorologist Brian Thompson. Conditions are favorable for tropical development throughout the Central Atlantic, heightening the threat of significant strengthening as the system approaches the U.S.